This Thanksgiving winter storm is about to push east and it is now imminent as we go into the next few days. This comes as the jet stream is about to dip down in a big way behind it, allowing for a lot of cool air to spill in. This video has all the details on the big changes that are coming in the next week or so to the weather pattern. That includes how cold your community could get. One Nation Weather. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune into this video. As always, I really appreciate you being here, and I really appreciate the support on the last couple of videos from everyone who tuned in. If you're a new subscriber, welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me. If you have not already subscribed, but you are new to the channel in this video, I'd love it if you'd hit that button down below, as I am now only nine subscribers away from 6,000. But let's go ahead and jump right into the future radar overview for our winter storm that we're going to be seeing in the central and eastern U.S. in the next few days, using a little bit more of a high-resolution picture here with some of the cities on screen. Looking at Radar Omega with the GFS model. As we jump ahead out of our Tuesday evening when I'm filming this and into our Wednesday, November 27th of 2024, you can see that we're going to see a generally unsettled region here in the central U.S. We've been seeing some heavy snowfall in some parts of the Rockies west of Denver and Pueblo there in Colorado. Now we're going to see some of that energy transfer with some light showers through parts of the plains. It is going to be a mostly cloudy day. There will be some sprinkles around in some parts of Missouri, Illinois, and over into Indiana as you can see, but overall most of Wednesday is still a decent travel day for most of the central plains over to the midwest and it's not really until we get into our wednesday evening and into the wednesday night time frame when things start going downhill for anybody who is still traveling on the roads whether it's for jobs whether it's for travel to family whatever you may have going on as we go overnight wednesday night and into the start of our thanksgiving this is as we go towards around 12 1 a.m in the morning on our thanksgiving day a pretty broad area with low pressure beginning to set up some rain showers and storms possible anywhere from mississippi and alabama up through central tennessee and then up into kentucky from there we see a bit of a pivot to a colder rain in some parts of the Ohio Valley and Central Appalachians, and then you see that stripe of some snow up there, maybe from around Terre Haute, Indiana, to Muncie in Indiana, that includes the Indianapolis region with a chance of snow. Columbus, Ohio, over to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, around to just north of you, looking like where that snow line is likely to set up as the models are now locked in on this setup. Here we go, moving out of the early morning hours over Thanksgiving to around that sunrise time frame. Could be snowing in some parts of central and eastern Ohio. The models are really showing that snow strike beginning to pick up as well, especially as we move into Pennsylvania, the northern part of the state, and into New York. Meanwhile, showers and storms extending back down through the mid-Atlantic and southeast, and that will definitely be a setup we'll have to watch. In fact, let me zoom in and kind of show you what this low pressure is doing by the time we go into the middle of our Thanksgiving day. There's your warm front up there. Rain in southern parts of New England as a result of that warm fetch behind the front. New York City, a mild rain. We'll see some rain into Connecticut, Rhode Island, as well as into Boston and places like Worcester and Massachusetts. But once you get north and west of places like Worcester and start pushing into the interior northeast, a better chance for snow as you're in that pocket of cool air. And then, of course, that blue line I just drew extending back down through the Appalachians, that is your cold front. Cold fronts are notorious for bringing, especially during the time of year where we've got a lot of heat in place, some severe weather out ahead of them, so I wouldn't even rule out even in November some isolated severe weather being possible in the southeast U.S. as a result of that on your Thanksgiving day. But overall, this system really winding down as we go overnight Thursday night and into our Black Friday. Notice most precip pushing offshore except for maybe some snow in Maine overnight Thursday and into our Friday, as well as some of that continuing lake effect snow that we will see for days as a result of the northwest to southeast flow across the lakes in this region. You can see parts of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan down there through North Central Michigan and then coming off the lakes in a place like North Central Pennsylvania and into Western New York. Those are usual trouble spots that from the Northwest to the Southeast. That's where we will see the lake effect behind this storm. But I want to go ahead and break down the snowfall. Then I'll talk about the severe weather aspects of the storm. Then we'll talk about the cool down. So use those timestamps below if you want to skip ahead to a specific point. But let's go ahead and zoom in and see how much snow that you could see by the time we go through our Friday evening as a result of this winter storm. First of all, the totals are not looking like a whole lot, but we will probably at least see some flakes into our early Thanksgiving morning over parts of Illinois, Indiana, and into Ohio. Looks like most spots will just pick up one to three inches if we do some, see some of that accumulation, and I think that will be more likely once you get out of east central Indiana and into central Ohio. Once you get up towards Akron, Cleveland, a couple of inches possible there, and then the totals really pick up north central PA through a lot of central New York those bluish shades indicating around three to six inches of decent snowfall. Most of Vermont, most of New Hampshire, and then the western parts of states like Massachusetts and Maine, that's where we'll have also a good chance for three to six inches of snow with a bit higher of totals, of course, as you go up in elevation. To say the least, this is a decent early season event, especially from a late November winter storm. The one other aspect of the storm I wanted to discuss, of course, is severe weather. So here's a look at my ONW level one to level seven at severe scale as we go into our Wednesday, November 27th of 20. 
2024. This also includes Wednesday night into early Thursday. For this time frame, it looks like mostly overnight Wednesday night into Thursday. That is going to be our time frame for some severe weather. Mostly isolated wind damage, but maybe even a tornado or two possible there in north central Mississippi into northwest Alabama. The setup does not look too intense, and the same goes with this as we go into our Thanksgiving Day itself. But not too intense does not mean zero, so you need to be alert of these threats even as we go from places like Mississippi up towards the Carolinas and points in between into our Thanksgiving Day and Thanksgiving evening because, again, all hazards could technically be possible. Isolated wind, isolated hail, and maybe even a tornado or two. Not really because there's a lot of warmth at the surface. There will be just a little bit, but mainly because the same jet stream that's going to bring this cold air that I'm going to start talking about now, that jet stream is really kicking up. And when you've got a strong atmospheric wind profile, you can see those winds swirling even on down towards the surface. But let's go ahead and talk about the temperature changes that we're going to see going day by day with the high and low temperatures projected from the National Digital Forecast Database all the way through the weekend ahead. Starting out with these temperatures that are forecasted for our lows in the morning, going overnight tonight and into our Wednesday, November 27th in the morning, you can overall see where our cold air is going to be coming from. It's really locked up with teens and single digits up here through the northern Rockies, into Montana, into the Dakotas, Minnesota, and northern Wisconsin. Most of the rest of the Midwest, parts of the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and Northeast, really around that freezing mark, as you can see, 32, 33s, a lot of those numbers on the screen. And realistically, that is right about where we should be, maybe even a bit above average in some cases for this time of the year. The same goes as we go into our Wednesday afternoon, not cooling down just yet, unless you're up there in the north central plains, plenty of 40s here through parts of the Midwest and Ohio Valley, as well as the interior Northeast. And then as you go down towards the Gulf Coast, look at all the 70s and even some of those Houston, Texas 80s that we'll see there and in the suburbs. That's a crazy number there. That could be near a record high Wednesday afternoon. Overnight Wednesday night and into our Thursday morning, we're going to see a beginning for that transition of our cold front making its way out of the upper Midwest and down towards the Midwest. Between it and that warmer air that we're going to have down towards the southeast U.S., we've got this area with the low to mid-30s, and this is that area where we're going to have the rain transitioning to snow in some parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio on our early Thanksgiving morning. This is going to be such a close call between rain and snow for a lot of communities here. So don't be surprised if, unless you're on the grassy surfaces, it is very difficult for the snow to stick up here, even in central parts of Indiana, pushing into parts of Ohio, into our Thanksgiving day. By the afternoon, any of that snow would probably melt anyway as we go up into the 40s before the front is really taking hold. But you can definitely see, as you go back on up there through northwest Illinois into Iowa, we've got the freezing mark back there. We've got temperatures in the teens and 20s for highs into the north central parts of the Dakota, so it is only cooling down from here as we go through the rest of the week and into the upcoming post-Thanksgiving weekend. Here we go into our Black Friday in the morning if you're north of this line that I just dashed out parts of northern and eastern Montana, through pretty much all of the Dakotas into parts of Minnesota and northwest Iowa. Teens, single digits, dropping down even into the negative numbers through those states. And then if you're between that line that I had already drawn and then this new one that I just put down further south, a lot of those areas, you see those reddish shades filling in, many spots in the teens and 20s, and that will go as far south already as a place like Nashville, Tennessee, over to Memphis, even into north central Virginia and the Washington, D.C. area by our Black Friday in the morning. So if you're one of those people who go shopping on Black Friday, as I said in the last video, not going to be a terrible day to be inside with the heat from the stores. Biggest problem is going to be the parking lot, as even into our Friday afternoon and evening, temperatures are only in the 20s up here in northern Missouri, northern parts of Illinois. We've got Indianapolis 30 for a high on your Friday. Then we take it back to the northwest from Indianapolis. We go to Minneapolis, and up there it is going to be more like 20 for a peak temperature on your Friday. But we're not done there. We're going to see in a few spots maybe some brief flurries, but overall just a quick cold front that slides through this entire region out of Friday into Saturday and Sunday of the upcoming weekend. Yeah, another cold front means even cooler air and deeper, more extended cool air will last into the early part of next week. Plenty of teens going down for a Saturday morning through parts of the Midwest and Ohio Valley. Some of those areas here in parts of Kentucky, West Virginia, very close to record cold highs as we're going to be around freezing for the peak temperature in the day on Saturday. Then here's the last day that I'm going to show as we go into our Sunday, December 1st, the first day of a new month. Are we going to see any big changes? Well, if anything, the cold air is just expanding more. It'll be another extremely cold morning that you want to be considering in terms of people, pipes, pets, all those things that you want to think about around your home. Of course, another one of those up there in the north central plains especially, but even down here into the Midwest Ohio Valley where temperatures will be in the teens and 20s. Be mindful of the cold. I know it's an early season cool down, but many people in the Midwest and North Central U.S. can handle these kinds of temperatures. It's happened every single year. 
it's just anomalous for this time of the year, and I want to make sure everybody is prepared. Again, people, pipes, pets, those are the things you want to especially be considering. Consider your neighbors who might not have enough blankets or just need some heat, whatever. Consider all those kinds of things as we go into this cool down ahead, as it is the first real big one of the season, and you can see that here. Looking at the anomaly map, I want to take us all the way through next week with this. Looking into our Black Friday, of course, the temperatures that I was showing you a minute ago, they're ranging anywhere from around 10, 15 to even 20 degrees below average for this time of the year with those most anomalous numbers. Numbers still locked up in the North Central Plains, even onto our Black Friday. So again, it's going to take that weekend blast to kind of finish making those numbers go eastward. And you can see from Illinois and Indiana all the way down here to the Carolinas, Virginia, we've got Maryland, we've got Delaware, and then back down through the rest of the Southeast. I should have listed you guys too. Not to leave you out there in Alabama and Florida, we are around 5 to 10 to 15 degrees below average according to these models being averaged out into the ensemble collection here into the early part of next week. Here we go through the rest of next week. This is a long way out. We're still about 10 days out from this, so there's plenty of time for a change in the pattern. But overall, the European model and its ensemble members as well are agreeing on a generally cooler air still staying locked into at least the eastern half of the U.S., 5, 10, 15 degrees below average from Indiana over to the Mid-Atlantic to the interior northeast, including Maine. Meanwhile, though, you can see to the west of this area, these ensemble members are agreeing on some warmer air really from the central plains westbound. So it's really a west to eastern U.S. divide in terms of our temperature pattern. And I don't normally show these in the videos, but these teleconnections or larger scale weather patterns actually play into the small scale stuff across the U.S. in a lot of ways. And this is your Pacific North American American oscillation as we go out of the end of November and into the start of December. This is an awesome graphic from Weather Bell showing the European ensemble members. They average out to show we're going out of a negative PNA or Pacific North American Oscillation towards a positive phase. And what a positive phase normally means is that we've got high pressure and associated ridging and warmer air in the western U.S. Meanwhile, the eastern U.S. is more prone to some troughing. We've got dips in the jet stream, some lower pressures moving through. Does that necessarily mean we'll be seeing snow into early December? No. But a positive PNA, which has links to a jet stream all the way back in Eastern Asia, normally means ridging in the west and troughing in the east, and that could mean that we could even beyond the 7 to 10 day range see cooler air at least in the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Northeast, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look at the headline recap for this video, though. Of course, I tracked that near term winter storm that we're going to be watching into the Eastern US in the next few days, possibly impacting some of your travel, but hopefully you'll already be at your Thanksgiving destinations watching some snow and severe weather out of that storm. Behind the system, we're going to be just looking at that cold blast that's really going to begin out of our Thanksgiving into our Friday, at least in terms of the large-scale nature of it pushing east. And that Pacific North American pattern that I was just showing you indicates that Eastern cold could be a long-term trend. And of course, I wouldn't be tracking all of this if it weren't for the awesome weather model maps and products that I get from Weatherbell. You can check them out for yourself, as I always say. Use their free trial link below in the description to this video if you would like them for yourself. As I mentioned earlier on, I am nine subscribers away from 6,000, so I would deeply appreciate it if you hit that button right down below. I'm honestly not quite sure when my next forecast video is going to be. I'll continue posting some updates in the community tab of my channel, but I want to spend some time with family and friends as we go into Thanksgiving as well, and I hope you guys understand that. I hope you have an awesome Thanksgiving. I'll catch you in the next update, which could be on a weird short notice of when it happens. One Nation Weather.